Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the future of work and how to prepare for your internship. I agree it's a great pleasure that we have three guest speakers from three various trades in Russell Kamer. Mr. Drew from the Hilton, Mr. Mr. Amir from the Artemi and Co, and Mr. Edwin Leon from McDonald's. And I would like to also recognize my colleague with me. So this is Rashid Saeed Saeed Hibsi from Rock THS School. And I was participated in this work experience with the Thara Group and it was a good experience. Um, first things first, we'd like to get some house rules here. Um, if anybody has any questions during this webinar, please type in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer at the end of the webinar. First, I would like to invite each panelist to introduce themselves and please let the audience know who they are and where they are based in their, their job role. First, I would like to start off with Mr. Drew. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kennedy, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this uh, webinar and all this program. Uh, we, we've had a very nice uh, alliance for the last couple of years, and, and I really look forward to continuing this alliance. Uh, for all the other viewers, uh, hello, my name is uh, Dhruvank Charan. Uh, I am from India and uh, I've been working with Hilton for last five years. Uh, I currently am based at Hilton Russell Hema Beach Resort and I'm working here as the learning and development manager. So all the students who come to Hilton, uh, sort of, I, I am the point of contact for them. So all the exposure that they get through, uh, I am... I'm a part of that and I, I really feel myself uh, very fortunate enough that I'm connected with the youth uh, and, and, and giving some inputs in the future. So thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Drew. And um, next I would like to invite to introduce himself is Mr. Amir. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Uh, actually, I, I am uh, Adnan. I am joining today uh, on behalf of uh, Al-Tamimi and um, Mr. Ammar, of course, uh, sent his regards and he apologized because he would, uh, was not able to do to join today. Uh, 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 and first of all, thank, thank you, uh, John, and thanks uh, for the foundation for uh, asking us to take part uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, as, you, as you are aware, we have a um, amount of understanding with the uh, uh, Al-Qasimi Foundation, uh, where, uh, whereby we have, uh, we have had uh, 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 two interns until now joined us and uh, we have helped them and assisted them uh, and have showed them the practical uh, side of the legal uh, profession and uh, of course we are delighted uh, again to take part in this uh, webinar and uh, respond to all of uh, your questions uh, and thank you again. Thank you Mr. Adan, thank you for support and last but not least we'd like to introduce himself Mr. Edwin. All right, uh, thank you John, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I really appreciate, thank you for inviting us to join in this webinar and happy to be uh, partnered with al Qasimi Foundations. Uh, well, my name is Edwin Santiago de Leon. I'm currently the training director of McDonald's UAE, and I've been in the country for 26 years so far here at McDonald's. That's why, again, thank you. And if you have any question later, please let us know. Feel free to do that. All right, thank you, John. Thank you, Edwin. And thank you, all panelists. Um, we really appreciate your support and Russell Kamer and for the foundation for these internships that we provide for the students of Russell Kamer. It's a valuable experience for them. And hopefully the questions that was asked today to you might answer some of their worries and concerns or help them benefit for the future. So I'd like to start off with the first question. And the first question I'd like to ask, and I would like to start maybe with Edwin with this, is how can a student um, better prepare themselves for their chosen careers in their future? All right, so that is really a good question. And I know how it feels. I've been a student also a long time ago. Okay, well, um, they really have to plan ahead okay, and prepare themselves about their chosen career in the future. 
mentally, physically, they have to anticipate exactly what they really want to do. First, make sure to choose the career that you really want, okay? because you are the one going to work hard for it to be successful. And secondly, anticipate some challenges, some barriers, some changes along the way that you may experience while pursuing your career. Also make sure you have certain backup career plan. Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. That's a great point of view and answers there. And Mr. Adan, do you have any additional advice for students planning for their careers? Yes. Um, uh, it's now, uh, it's, it's very important for the students that uh, uh, makes the most of all the available resources. Uh, they have to do their research. They have to speak to tutors, alumni from universities, uh, apply for intern programs uh, as much as they can. Uh, they have to uh, follow up with uh, with the media nowadays. Now they have they are fortunate actually that they have all of these useful tools uh, uh, like LinkedIn, where they can uh, uh, see. Uh, what is the market uh, uh, is, is uh, what, what, what fields and what innovations uh, are made available uh, now uh, so uh, and, and if I want to be specific to the legal profession and for law students actually um, they, they are aware that there are many many practice areas they need to ex explore and visual, visualize visualize themselves doing such practice uh, we have like litigation um, uh, with our civil or criminal litigation. We have commercial or corporate uh, uh, legal practice. Uh, then when, when they decide and visualize themselves in such practice, they have to put in place a short, medium, long and long term plan and how, how they want to pursue this, their career uh, uh, in this practice. And of course, the most important thing that they need to commit to this plan. Uh, as I said, there, uh, there are many practices which emerge from time to another. Now in the UAE and the GC countries, for example, we have the taxation, uh, which is uh, there is a new regime implemented and put in place. There are many regulations. Uh, maybe let's say like that the past generations they were not they are not uh, engaged into into such practice, so um, they have to be more engaged about what is the uh, let's say uh, the market norm, what uh, are the companies and big enterprises are looking for uh, uh, at the moment. Um, of course, it's very important that uh, the the goals must be realistic and aligned with their personal skills and passion. Um, uh, and, that's, uh, and that's it. I, I agree with you. And um, when I was a lot younger, um, I didn't have the social media presence yes, um, exactly. to, yeah. to research and put my profile out there. So that's a, a good skill that they need to learn. And, and going to Mr. Drew um, in the hospitality industry, and considering the UAE especially is largely built on the hospitality of the hotel change and the restaurants. Is there anything that you could recommend for that help them with their career paths and that in your industry? Uh, the same thing what both the panelists have mentioned that you need to do a lot of research, right? Uh, because it's, it's uh, career is the biggest part of your life. Uh, you would be working for the next 20, 30 years. And if you do not do the research and don't get to know, okay, this is my passion, this is what I want to do, then you might end up in a sector which does not excite you. Uh, you need to have that excitement every single day. So the research has to be done from your end. And just as you mentioned way back in our times, we did not have google.com and all that. So even if we had to ask, uh, ask uh, someone and get the answers, we had to physically or call them up and then get uh, inputs. So it's very easy for uh, the new generation. It's, it's just in their, in a tap uh, of their hand and uh, do the research, get to know what excites you, what is that you're passionate about and then go for it because it should not happen that you regret later that what have I joined, right? Yeah, I so agree that's, with you. That's... Yeah, so I really agree with you. And I think the internship programs and work experience really help the students totally, have that totally. to find additional information before their decisions. Thank Correct. you. So, so all those three answers are very good there. 
So what type of qualification are you looking for in your business, Mr. Edwin? So uh, for qualification, again, based on our business needs, we're looking for those applicants with hospitality and service oriented, a good personality with positive attitude, and those people who are willing to work under pressures. Something like for management trainee, at least college graduate, and for service crew, at least completed secondary level. And those people will really have a passion to deal with different types of people and work with diverse people in different environment, especially in this country that we're dealing with almost 200 nationalities. And we really want them to be flexible and understand about the business needs and how they can perform their job in a better way. And especially to satisfy those customers. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you so much, Edwin. And I know, Drew, you're in the same similar industry of the hospitality. Would you agree or is there any additional points you would add to that? I totally agree to that. Uh, so we prefer, I would say we look at uh, team members or we look at uh, the, what do you say, people who have a background of hotel management, but that's not a hardcore set uh, regulation or rule, I would say. So we also look at people who are hospitable, cheerful, outgoing, uh, people who who are people persons, right? So in hospitality, day in, day out, more than you deal with machines, you deal with human beings. And if you are a people's person, it becomes very easy for you. So uh, qualifications matter, but not that much. We look for attitude of that, that hospitable attitude, that attitude of serving others, that's what we majorly look for. That's fantastic. And like you say, both of you are very similar in your roles that you're in the hotels or the restaurant business. But Mr. Adan, in your business of legal, and I understand the process of becoming a lawyer in that part, what, what type of qualifications and how long should they prepare themselves for their career that's in yours? <clears throat> Uh, actually, for uh, let's say for Al Tamimi, uh, we uh, mainly uh, require the lawyers to be qualified in their own jurisdiction. Uh, this, this, of course, from a credential perspective. Uh, also, for some uh, areas of practice, uh, the, the, the lawyers should be bilingual, uh, especially who deals with uh, the authorities and courts. Um, now, from personal uh, perspective, of course, we um, uh, most uh, mostly we look for uh, someone who is persuasive, someone who is uh, uh, has the uh, uh, let's say the passion to win a debate. Let's say, <laughs> and uh, so there are some uh, characteristic, uh, 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 um, uh, let's say. Characteristic uh, things we, we we seek for in the individual uh, level. Uh, of course, now we have other departments. We have business uh, support, uh, such as, such as IT finance. Uh, well, this is this all depends on the job rules at hand. So uh, and that's thank you. That's a perfect example. And like in the legal, like you just said, is that somebody has got the passion to win. <laughs> and don't exactly. give it yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's very important. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much for your answers. And it leads me on to the next question. And each one of you might have a very similar one, but the hiring process, I'd like to start with yourself, Drew. Um, how do you think the students could help themselves in the hiring process? For example, CVs or interview skills. How do you think they can help themselves? Sure. So uh, in terms of hiring process at Hilton, we have, just like any other multinational company, we also have our Hilton Careers website. So all the vacancies are posted there, right? From a waiter to the general manager to vice president, all the vacancies are posted there. So what the students can do, even for internship, we have vacancies. So they can just have a look, apply there. What happens is once we receive all the applications, we start to uh, shortlist which profile suits, uh, which, which, which uh, person suits the profile. And that's how we shortlist and then we start to interview them. So the HR rounds are there, departmental, rounds are there and then uh, based on their performance and qualifications and as I said the attitude and all of that then the person is shortlisted and they they start uh, once the whole process is done. 
Okay, thank you, Drew. And Edwin, would that the same sort of process for in the hospitality in the restaurants? Would that the same for you? Um, somehow similar. Yeah, we, we have what we call it with Domas, the hospitality hiring, uh, where we encourage all the applicants to use our website to apply by submitting their resume or bay data online at mcdonaldsarabia.com or they can just scan a QR code in our hiring poster inside our restaurants that will lead them directly to our websites. Okay, uh, So to submit their applications. Then we also screen, of course, process of screening, check all application, schedule interview, conduct orientations if once it's hired. And of course, we ask them to submit some required documents for some, something like visa processing. For management trainee, okay, we schedule them at least one day on the job evaluation, just in case. Thank you. And, and Adam, I, I'm assuming um, the, the hiring process for yourself, because it is leading to a lot of legal, is there a difference in the hiring process for the legal trade? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, lawyers uh, mainly they are interviewed by, interviewed by HR and relevant department heads. Uh, and business support. Uh, there are like multiple uh, interviews and uh, uh, there is process. Sometimes uh, they will um, uh, do like maybe a couple of exams uh, before uh, uh, before they qualify to the uh, next uh, or final phase of the uh, process. Uh, and uh, as, as uh, the panelists mentioned that uh, there, with the vacancies are available on our website. Uh, and of course, for interns, um, uh, they, they can, uh, there will be an interview with the HR and potentially the relevant department. Uh, for, uh, and it varies from the trainees. The trainees undergo the full trainee recruitment process, uh, which includes the interview with an HR, uh, a test test, delivery of presentation, or partner uh, interview. Okay, thank you so much. And um, that's great answers. So uh, can you please provide a brief summary of, uh, of the different type of uh, fields uh, of work that uh, employees can do? For example, accounts, IT, and uh, uh, writing uh, a report. So Mr. Uh, Mr. Edwin? All right. Um, as well, uh, in our head office, overall, uh, we have various 50, uh, almost like 15 various departments and they can choose from such as marketing, where they will learn digital advertising, IT, programming, accounting department, allow about those expenses and balancing, QA and supply chains about product testing. We have administration, HR, through selecting and hiring process. Equipment department, they will learn about repair and maintenance service. PRO, about processing of documents uh, like Visa and Emirates ID. Uh, training and development by conducting seminars and workshops and other McDonald's operation to customer service as well. Oh, great. And all for yourself, Mr. Arden. Yeah, now um, for lawyers, we have various departments and uh, type of work actually we undertake uh, varies from a department to another. For example, uh, uh, for the litigation uh, uh, lawyers, um, uh, we, we deal with with court proceedings, uh, we put strategies for the clients. Um, uh, uh, for for example, for corporate departments, they uh, they meet with, with the clients uh, to set up a company or to do their housekeeping and all internal uh, policies and regulations. Uh, for employment, uh, uh, another example, they also. Uh, uh, to try to uh, advise uh, uh, the clients on employment issues and uh, prepare uh, employment contracts. Uh, so it, it varies from a department to another. Um, uh, of course, we also have the HR, business development and marketing, finance, accounting, secretarial and administration. Thank you, Mr. Arden. And Mr. Drew, um, is there any additional ones that you would have in your hotel other than the normal hospitality? Uh, almost similar. Hotel departments, as I mentioned to all the new interns coming in, are divided into two parts, operational and non-operational. So operational are the ones which are guest-facing, uh, which directly deal with the guests. So front office, housekeeping, food and beverage service, culinary, uh, recreation department in resort like ours. And then we have non-operational departments like finance, IT, human resources, security, engineering is one department, a big department that 
is is not there in the other uh, two organizations that I could see. Uh, so all these departments, sales and marketing, commercial uh, revenue department, reservations department. So all these uh, departments are various. Uh, uh, what you say venues where the students can uh, get into and then grow their career within hotels. Thank you. Um, one of the reasons I decided with that question was is as each one of you worked with me with the other interns is people get this image of the company name and they just think that's the one type of role they can apply for within the, the company. So I'm glad that you've shared that there's other departments and other skills that the companies need, which is fantastic. Um, which leads me on to my next question. Um, and I would start off with yourself, Mr. Edwin. Um, do you have a direct inter internship program straight from university into the company or other than what they come through with AQF? Okay, uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, yes, right now we have a tie up with American AUS, American University in Sharjah, uh, part of the prerequisite for graduating student to complete certain number of hours, approximately 50 to 100 hours doing internship program in our head office based on the course that they're taking. Okay? Any of the courses that as far as they join internship program, they can do it in our head office or in our restaurant premises as well. Thank you. And Mr. Drew? Uh, so most of our internship, as I mentioned, we, we put the vacancies on Hilton careers and uh, our regional team, they support us with hiring process. So we directly do not deal with any institute uh, for, for the six months or one year internships. It is our regional team which supports us with uh, the hiring process. Thank you. And Mr. Arden? Yeah, uh, actually we have, uh, we are partnered with some universities uh, or we have an MOU with some uh, but of course, we still uh, welcome applications are out of outside of those uh, w which we have already uh, an, an, an arrangement with. Thank you so much. And I'm assuming all these internship portals are all on your company websites that anyone looking yes. for internships can go to their your company websites. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Thank you so much for your answer. So, which life skills uh, would help students uh, during the internship? Are they uh, specific new life skills? May learn. Uh, so, uh, can I start with Mr. Adin? Uh, okay. um, now, most, most importantly, especially in the, uh, uh, in the legal practice, uh, you have to be well organized. You have to gain communication skills, look to be uh, for, for innovations, time management. Uh, as maybe I have mentioned before, you would have to, to, uh, to look how you can enhance your persuasive skills, how we how to run a debate, how to win a debate, uh, how to set a strategy. You have to be analytical, uh, let's say, uh, to see to, to know how to put things in the right order, uh, um, how to give a pragmatic, let's say, solution. So there should be uh, uh, in, there should be a methodology for the the way how you work, how you think. You have to set like plan A, B, C, and uh, uh, how, how, like you have to take it up to the end to, to try to safeguard the, the interests of your clients. You have to be aggressive in some instances. You have to be cautious in some instances. So uh, in our, let's say, uh, legal practice, you have to be also flexible. So uh, um, this these kinds of, of of course of skills, they, of course they don't come uh, 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 in, in a day or two. It, you need to have practice or exercise for multiple years until you gain this. But it's it's very important to try uh, and develop these uh, skills uh, uh, from now. So. As a, because you know time is an essence and success is for me is measured by time uh, so uh, um, it's too, too important to focus on these skills and develop them thank you so much um i can understand life skills a lot of people like you just said takes a long time um and what this work experience internship helps them build their life skills and most of them are social skills that they can build 
And obviously, I working with Mr. Edwin and Mr. Drew, I understand from them as well, the social skills is the communication to direct to the customers is a big skill that some people lack as in, as in social skills. Um, so what I would like to do is move directly on to another question. And I'll tell you what the reason being is during our internships and our training, our orientations, one of the questions that comes along is, from university, is it possible and do you have the opportunity for students to go into a direct management position? And I would like to start off with maybe with Drew. Uh, so uh, starting directly as a manager, that's not possible uh, from the university, but we have a sort of management training programs uh, in which you can uh, enroll yourself again, uh, apply online. So there are different ones. Uh, one of them is called as elevator program in which you can be a part of that and then in operational or non-operational departments whichever you are uh, planning to you can get into front office you can get into housekeeping so it's an 18 years uh, I'm sorry 18 months uh, uh, program and at the end of 18 months program then you uh, once you graduate and if sort of you meet the requirements of the company, then you start as a manager uh, position. We have for finance called as Finis, for engineering department, another one. So there are various programs that the students can enroll themselves into. And Thank that you. does not require a, a hotel management background. We ha currently have one of the elevators and she is from IT field, right? So it does not require hardcore uh, qualifications of hotel management. Thank you, Mr. Drew. And Mr. Edwin, do you have a direct management um, training straight from university? Uh, I believe yes. Okay. Uh, again, based on the environment of our business, the restaurant especially, yes, we give them chance to pursue their career directly as part of management level, as trainee as well, to practice and demonstrate their expertise based on what they learn from like customer service, guest relation, or how to manage a restaurant. At the same time, Sometimes depends if we have opening in our head office, depends on their career path. But normally we start, uh, we give them chance to be a management trainee at least. Thank you, Mr. Edward. And Mr. Arden, I know obviously with yours with the legal, I'm assuming um, that is there no a direct approach into management as uh, comes through experience? Would you agree or is that uh, wrong? Yeah, as far I'm, as I'm aware, no, I don't think there uh, will be directly uh, engaged in the management. Uh, but of course, we have a career pathways across all departments. Okay, that's great to hear. And I think all three companies there, um, you have um, um, semi-direct into management through a training program of sorts. Um, but going back to previous questions, it's the life skills and experience that counts a lot to get into the management roles. Excellent. Thank you so much for your answers. So uh, how can students apply uh, to your company to, uh, to the internship other than going uh, through al Qasmi Foundation? Put that maybe to Edwin as your remote at the moment. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Uh, I believe any student interested to apply uh, uh, for internship program in our company, they can just send us an email for internship requests together with university approval certificate for internship program. They will also go through interview process by our HR department. And if they meet our criteria for internship program, he or she will be selected based on their good grades, enthusiasm for the job, and they're good characters. Thank you. And Mr. Arden? Yeah, well they can, uh, all students can uh, send their application through our website. I will uh, share it on, on the chat uh, and contact us directly uh, to present themselves. Thank you, Mr. Arden. Mr. Drew? Same thing. As I mentioned, we have our vacancies on the Hilton Careers website. So the students can directly apply online and then uh, go through the interview process. Thank you so much. Um, we have two more questions before we move on to questions from the audience. And um, my first question is actually a question that unless you do the work experience, you wouldn't realize how long they can be. But um, I will start off with Mr. Edwin is what is the average working hours as in the length of hours and the shifts, would you say in your okay. business? All right. Uh, if in our head office hours are fully Nine hours, that's including one hour lunch break. And in our restaurant, based on the shift, is a shifting, still nine hours. Uh, until now, we don't have part-timers. But again, we have a pre-breaks, one hour break as well in our restaurant. And it's flexible as well in the store. 
Thank you. And Mr. Adam? Yeah, now, um, the standard working hours uh, from nine to six, but uh, however, this can vary based on the deadlines and uh, the drugs transactions we are undertaking, uh, especially that uh, uh, sometimes we deal with courts and other delicate uh, uh, jobs which uh, we needed to be uh, uh, done in timely manner. Uh, but uh, I mean, I still, uh, um, and at Altamimi and Company, we have uh, a flexible, uh, uh, let's say, uh, working hours, and we have a nice work life balance too. Thank you. And Mr. Drew? So, as you know, hotels operate 24 7. There's no stopping in hotels, the guests are always there. So, we have different shifts. So. Different team members come in different shifts, especially the operational departments, as I mentioned. Also, some other departments like security, engineering, they are also working around the clock. So if I talk about the admin team, it's something similar to what Mr. Adnan mentioned. It is nine to six. But again, depending upon the requirement of the job, we might have to extend sometimes or flexible work hours. Uh, the team is, because there are three shifts typically, the team is expected to work at least nine hours a day so that there is a one hour overlap on uh, every shift, every next shift that is coming. Thank you so much for your answers again. So going to the last question, may I ask, uh, how do you feel the internship uh, program helps students and employees? So Mr. Uh, Drew? Uh, it's easier to understand from the student's point of view because, uh, am I audible? No, I can hear you, it's okay. Okay, okay, some pop-up came. So uh, it's easier to understand from the student's point of view because obviously the students are gaining uh, experience, uh, hands-on, uh, on-the-job training and all that. So they get to know how the work is actually done in hotels. For us, it's better because the students, when they come in, they bring fresh eyes. They look at things differently. And then when they give us feedback that, okay, this maybe can be done in another way or this can be uh tweaked a bit so we get inputs from their end and we get those fresh eyes which helps us in making our operations a bit better sometimes so it's a win-win situation for both of us and mr adam yes, um, of course now internship program is very important because especially for legal professions uh, because they provide practical experience uh, because uh, at the end you need to integrate academic knowledge with the practical uh, application uh, and uh, uh, let the students enter the professional working world and see what a career in a law firm look like on daily basis uh, and to expose them to professional work working world. Uh, I, I recall that uh, when I was in college actually uh, um, you know, we read big books, we uh, do uh, lengthy researches, but we never get engaged in the practical, uh, we get, never get engaged in the practical uh, application of our job. And once I start my uh, training, uh, I become a trainee, uh, I found how interesting uh, is, is, uh, uh, is, the th is, is the legal profession. So. I think to be more excited and to uh, you should immerse in the uh, in the application in the practical side of it and that's why I urge if every law student especially to uh, either uh, even if they cannot do internship programs uh, that they, they get in touch uh, with any uh, lawyers they uh, they are acquainted with through their family through their friends just to have even a simple idea about uh, how things uh, uh, work in the real world. Thank you so much. And I agree with all you three panelists. Internships is a very important thing for both company and for the student, both sides benefit. Um, and I think students, um, the internships vary. Now we offer obviously internships with your companies, for example, from anything from five days up to will be two months. Um, some internships can be longer in other companies, but that tends to be for students that's left university. Um, so what we're gonna do now is um, go to some questions from the audience. 
And I will start off with one that at the moment is I've got here. Do you feel that um, somebody completing an internship is more likely to be hired within your company from that internship? I will put that to Edwin, please, start off. All right. Uh, yes, we believe on that. Uh, we also experienced that before. That's why also having internship in your company, it helps you to identify some future employee, future staff. That's why it's really good to experience that. And we experienced that before. That's why it is good to do that. And it is a big chance, actually. Uh, our tie up with American University as well is really identifying our future employees, whether, whether it is in the office or in our restaurants. Thank you. And the same question to you, Mr. Drew. Uh, yes, sir. I would say not 100% always, but we look at interns as future employees. So uh, if, if they're performing well and there are vacancies, then definitely we can hire. And last but not least, Mr. Arden, do you have an answer for that one? Yeah, I, yeah, we believe uh, it's it's not uh, uh, the, the definite uh, uh, that they will get, uh, but this will increase their chances. Of course, they will give them, uh, them some boost uh, uh, to their CVs and uh, to, to have uh, a job uh, with us. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got a good question here from one of the students. Is we understand the foundation support and companies and the students within Russell Kamer but all three of you are very large corporate companies and got bases all over the UAE. So the question was, if they applied to one of your head offices, are they able to choose which Emirate they work in or is it based on post only? And can I put that question maybe to Mr. Edwin to start off with? Uh, all right, um, again, uh, if unfortunately uh, our main head office located in Sharjah, Okay, in Bohera, and we cannot move this yearly, and I believe we will stay here for a while. That's why if you are willing to move in Sharjah, you are most welcome. And the rest of our restaurant, if you are willing to work in our restaurant as a, in charge of our restaurants, we're happy to hire you anytime. Just let us know because we are, McDonald's branches are all over UAE. Okay. And Mr. Arden, I know obviously you're company is also based around the GCC yes. um, and also obviously the UA and I know I believe your head office is in Dubai would that same question apply to you as in like could they choose which office or is it based on which shall we say practice they do in in law yeah um, exactly now we have some departments that uh, might be interested in more than others which are not located in the Emirates uh, uh, but of course now um, um, of course, we are we are flexible to accommodate the request, but based on the availability and um, uh, and the uh, uh, relevant uh, uh, department uh, capacity. So um, yeah, and I think we have uh, remote working now uh, put in place uh, where they can even if they are in Iraq, they can virtually meet with the lawyers and uh, 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 get uh, their feedback and assist them with the work. So Thank this is, might ease, th ease things for them. Thank you so much. And Mr. Drew, I know obviously the Hilton is a worldwide um, business and Dubai and UAE have their own branches here from Doubletree or sponsored by the Hilton. So the same question for yourself, if somebody wanted to apply for the Hilton as an IT, are they able to choose which Emirate is well, or is it all go through based on position which Emirate hotel is needed? Uh, with us, it's very sorted, uh, Mr. Kennedy, as the vacancies are posted based on the hotel. So each hotel, each property posts their vacancies, right? So when you're applying, it clearly says you're applying for Hilton Russell Khaimah Beach Resort, or you're applying to um, Hilton and Abu Dhabi Yas Island. So it makes things easier for the applicant that they do not have an ambiguity when I apply for a position, where will I be based? So it's all clear, transparent, so they don't have any confusion in their mind. Thank you so much. Uh, we have one more question and then we're tied up for the day. So this is for each um, panelist. Uh, so I will start off with you, Mr. Drew, as well. 
again. Um, do you think that if you had um, chosen a different career path, have you done a practical experiences in different areas before you studied in your initial job? Uh, so I'll, I'll share a brief about my journey. I joined hotel industry because I wanted to be a chef. Uh, I have a passion for cooking. Uh, and when I started working in hotels, I thought maybe this is not something which I would want to continue because cooking for me was a passion. But when you work in hotels, it's a it's a different setup altogether, right? So then eventually I landed up in housekeeping. So when I did my internship, I got an exposure of all the four departments. And then I realized that housekeeping is something I would be keen uh, working in. A uh, couple of years working in housekeeping, I became uh, a supervisor. I started taking trainings and all. And then I realized I can fit in training department. I can be a good trainer. So I did my MBA, then moved into training department. So yes, sometimes it happens that what we think of, okay, this is what I want to do. When we actually do it, we realize that is not what we want to do, right? So sometimes it's okay to take some time and uh, understand the dynamics of the industry that we are applying in. But yes, if I would have chosen any other field, that's what you're asking. I've always been a hotelier. I, I, I feel that I, I can only fit in hotels, right? So Thank you. Yeah. based Thank on you. my attitude and my behavior, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And um, the same question to Mr. Arden, um, if you would have had any more practical experiences in different jobs, do you think your career path would have been different or did you decide quite early on to become in the law practice? Um, I think uh, in the jurisdiction, actually, uh, uh, where I, uh, I studied law and um, started my career path, um, I, I think once uh, I finished my, my uh, I, I graduated, I, I became a trainee lawyer, then uh, you get immediately engaged with courts and uh, 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 so uh, I think uh, I, I will not say I was forced to, uh, uh, to, to, to be tied up with litigation practice, but I was fortunate enough uh, that I found uh, myself uh, and I found it very exciting and very, uh, I, I, I found myself that I fit into this practice. Uh, and um, so I don't think uh, I, I would have chosen any other field of practice. Thank you so much. And last, Mr. Edwin, would you have chosen a different career path? Uh, actually, yes. Actually, by profession, I'm a graduate of Bachelor in Accountancy. I'm a finance guy. I'm supposed to be like Adnan. I'm supposed to be a finance lawyer. Unfortunately, during those fourth year and fifth year, to be law is really is hectic for me. Uh, I'm a working student. I work at McDonald's as a part-time during the, those period. But what's good about it, because uh, I was promoting a different level as well at McDonald's. And at my fourth year, I believe, during accountancy period, uh, I was promoted already as a manager position. That's why I enjoy working at McDonald's. And I know during the time that I will end up the training department, because it is my passion to, to teach people, okay, to share some other information and knowledge to other people. I know when you work as an accountant, you will be in the office, get stuck on the table. And I think this is not my life, okay? That's why I, uh, my exposure at McDonald's really helped me out to be more confident about myself. And I, I believe that really helped me to where, we are, where I am right now, okay, as a training director, because I know I love dealing with people. Thank you so much, Edwin. I think that opens the door for everyone. Basically what we should do, we should have experiences in various fields in our career. And even if you are studying and, most students have to earn money around the world while they're studying. You know, you get a part-time job. I think it highlights and it helps you choose a, a career path for your future because we all change our career paths as, our, as we get older, which I have personally done myself. Well, thank you so much. I would like to say thank you for everybody that's come today. First, I would like to say thank you very much for our visitors um, and our guests that's attended. And secondly, I would like to thank um, Rashid for attending and helping me today with this webinar. And like he said earlier, he experienced the work experience and he worked for Ifara Group and he learned different skills there, which is fantastic. And lastly, I would like to thank the three panelists that spent their time coming with us today. Even though we had technical problems earlier, 
I thank you so much for your support and our guests and Russell Kamer students will appreciate all your comments. The last few things I would like to say is one, after this recording, the video will be uploaded to the Al Qasimi Foundation YouTube um, in a, a week or two. And secondly, for the students that's um, listening and watching this webinar, um, if you feel and like to do some work experience, if you can go to our study at AQF Instagram account and you can apply on there. So my last closing comments is I'd like to say thank you for everybody and I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you.